That is Ichabod Crane, the Headless Horseman. And we've been trying to <clears throat> attach ourselves to the head, amen? amen? Because the Headless Horseman is this religious system that is not attached to the head. And they are functioning in many cases on their own. And we are saying to the Lord, God, we want to be connected to the head. Come on, are y'all with me? And this guy right here is the guy that we've got to resist in every point of our lives. Um, and so that we, Paul said, <clears throat> excuse me, Paul said the reason why they were having that the these people who have problems is because he says in Colossians, he says, they do not hold to the head. They do not hold to the head. They have not held to the head. Realizing that everything that happens in our lives come from our head. Everything, nothing barred from that. It is so much that's happening in with your body on a regular basis. Every, I, I, I was meditating on it the other day. Again, everything you do, all this movement I'm doing, it seems fluid, it seems instant, it seems all of that, but it has to come from the head for anything to function. There is no part of the body that functions without the head telling it to function. If it functions without the head, it is off, isn't it? Okay, it's a spasm or it is, it is, it is whatever that is not supposed to be happening, the body is functioning on its own. And it can through muscle spasms and all that kind of stuff. And it's not coming from the head. You, why, why do you know that? Because it is irritating you. Okay? If it, if it was coming from the head, it wouldn't irritate you. Because you would know it's happening because it came from you. There are so many things happening in the body of Christ that are spasms. That is not coming from the head. Coming from the headless horseman. And if we don't get free of that, if we, again, every religious system is a part of this guy. There is not a religious system on the planet that's not a part of this guy. Every religious system, name any of them. And that even includes Christian religious folk. Do you hear me? So it makes no difference because you go to a church. I'm going to loosen up on you a little bit this morning. You can go to a church all you want, but you could still be connected to this dude. Okay? Meaning, Jesus is not giving you the instructions on what to do. I told you last week, the word of God that came to me, that the Lord says, don't do anything without first consulting with me. Okay? Yes. Are y'all with me here? He told you what? Keep your commitments. You already committed some things. Keep your commitments so you don't upset everybody else's life because of your error. Keep your commitments, fulfill your commitment, but don't make any more. Are y'all with me here? Yes. Unless you check with me. You see? Now, let me, let me say this to you so you can understand something. Because it's really important for you. With that word coming to me... <clears throat> I violated it twice already. <laughs> and I want you to hear that. Because <laughs> you think that, okay, I got the word, then I'm going to be this holy, holy person, and I'm going to do it all right, Kyrie. I done messed up twice. Well, I done took something else to do without first making sure it was right with the head. Is, it, is that transparent enough for you? Yes. So that when you mess up, <laughs> hoping you don't, but when you do, you know there is some grace yes. to get back on track. Amen. But I acknowledged it and said, Lord, I'm so sorry. But we're so used to, hello, yes. moving without getting confirmation from the Lord yes. that we do it instantaneously. Yes. 
Remember, keep your commitments. What commitment have you made? Whatever commitment you've made, keep your commitment. He didn't tell you, Pastor, to, to change. He said, oh, I messed up. I need to, I need to quit. You see? Yeah. See? You say, look, I took the job at Corning and I didn't ask the Lord. So I'm going to quit. And then that be done call me. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you better talk to this boy up in there. She, she done made she she she's good at home. She ain't never going back to work. That's... <laughs> Amen. So what I'm telling you is keep your commitments, but learn to wait. So can you do such and such? It's a good possibility that I can. But could I get back to you? Did you hear what I just said? Yes, There's a really good possibility that I can do that, but I need to get back to you. I really do need to get back to you. It won't be long. I, tr I promise I'll get back to you within the day. Yes. Is, is, isn't that easy? Mm -hmm. Isn't that easy? And then you just take a moment or so, find out, Lord, was that you or is this me? Now, that seems a little rigid right now. The reason why it seems rigid, and it's going to be rigid for a minute, is because you've been so far on the other side. Yes. Okay, you've been so far on the other side of just doing whatever come to your mind and your heart and just moving whenever you think it's okay. Okay, you got to balance it back all over by taking your time in the in the presence of God. Is this getting through to anybody but me? Okay, y'all y'all tracking with this? And so and so what happens is you're going to have to do that. But I will tell you, I I think it will come to a place that is quick. Yeah. I think it'll come to the place that you'll know and you will know even as you are known. I believe it's going to come to a place that instantly if somebody asks you and you go, no, I can't. I think, I think it'll come up really seriously. Let me give you, let me give you um, 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 a, a story. My wife worked at, my wife worked it's hard for some people to believe this because of her little soft voice and her personality. But she worked as a prison guard. <laughs> she worked in the prisons. That that don't even look like her, does it? Okay, but she did. So when I met her, she was at the jail. She was working at. She had been working at the jail, and she, when I met her, she said she wanted to go back and work in the jail. And we get ready to get married. And I said, okay. <laughs> Let me, and this was true, I said, let me pray about this. Let me really f pray about this. And I remember away from her, I, I was praying, and it was like, it was like sirens went off inside. It was like inside of me, it was like, no. Like, I said, oh my God, you're real serious about this. You don't want her to go back to the prison. So I call, I, matter of fact, this is when we were in the espousal period, so I took, we went to the park. We didn't go to the park after the espousal period because I got her. I had to do all this stuff to get her, so I had to trick her to make her think I like outdoors. <laughs> So she she was tricked. <laughs> so you and I took her to the park, and I told her, I said, "Look, I prayed about this thing, and the Lord said no." I said, "No, I'm I'm telling you, it's not me." And I told her what it went off inside. She said, well, I, "You know, I really would love to do it." I said, "I'm telling you, the Lord said no." And she said, "Well, I'm gonna go with what you got." And I said, "Thank you," because the Lord said no. I didn't say no. I was apprehensive about it, but the Lord said no. And she said, okay, fine. You see, you see are you with me here? Is that making any sense? Okay. And again, we weren't married yet, but she was submitting that thing to me because look, you're going to be, you're going to be my head, quote unquote, if you will. Go ahead, woman. God. Then I need to know what you're thinking. Yes. Okay. 
Everybody good? Yes. Y'all tracking? Yes, okay. All right. Same thing. <clears throat> same thing that happened for me with her. She has come up with stuff and went, you don't need to do this. And you don't need to mess with this person. Now, I will tell you, I'm a tad, I was a tad bit hard-headed more than she. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> most, most men, tad bit more hard-headed. Just a tad bit, not much. And what happened in our situation was that when she told me it wasn't a good thing, I didn't hear it right away, so how I learn it? Hard way. Mm-hmm. Tribulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I learned it the hard way. So she would always have, I told you so, in the back of her mind. <laughs> even if even if she even if she doesn't tell you I told you so. She got that I told you, boy. You should have listened to what I told you. Because I know I got now. Now, sometimes, sometimes it's not just the Lord telling it to her. Sometimes she have that woman intuition thing that I believe God can work through as well. Are you, are you with me? Yes. That she's got this woman intuition thing. But I still say to her, is that coming from you or have you prayed about it? Because you could, you could make me go the wrong way. Just because you don't want me to go a certain way. And I, sh I can't listen to that all the time. That's right. I've got to listen to where the Lord is saying. That's right. Amen. Is, is that making any sense? Amen. The other thing that happened in our relationship, I, I'm just giving you marital family. It don't have, again, you sing it, you go right to the head, right, man? Sometimes in the marital situation, you got somebody in between the head. That's what I'm trying to show you. But in this case, a lot of times I'll come to her and go, hey, you know what? This is what the Lord showed me. She said, oh, you late. He told me that three days ago. <laughs> she said, he always tell me before he tell you. I said, wow. No, he, t he told, I said, he tells you so you can move with me. So you know it's him. When I bring it to you, you go, I already heard it. So now let's move. Yes. Okay. I don't have to convince you. Yes. Of the fact that this is where we need to be going. So the head has said something. Listen to this statement. So as we go here today, you can understand this. Listen to the statement. The blessings are is in the instruction. Oh boy, you man, I should take up the offering right now. What I just told you is amazing. Because I don't think many of us understand it. The blessing is in the instruction. There, there, you, don't, you don't need to ask God if he's going to bless it if he said it. Yes. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. In, his, in him giving it to you, blessings in there. Yes. Okay? Abraham, you're going to be the father of, 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 we'll go there, many nations. The blessing was in it. The blessing is in what God tells you to do. Are y'all with me so far? And so when you get that in your spirit, now you really want to hear. Yes. Why? Because now I don't even have to worry about if I'm going to be successful. If it's going to work. It's going to work because I heard. Yes. The things that we are asking God to bless, we got to check to see if he told us. Yes. That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> because now we're saying God bless this I'm struggling with it well, well why are you struggling matter of fact in the struggle I will tell you this in the instruction if struggle is a part of it you will already know it That's right. he is not going to tell you to do something that you're going to struggle in and he's not going to tell you beforehand That's right. you're not going to be a surprise to you there are no surprises in the Lord no more Jesus took all those away I am preaching better than y'all responding to me. Y'all got to come on with me here. This is serious stuff. So Paul is trying to get us as the body of Christ, amen, as the body of Christ to live in the place with the Lord. He's trying to get us to walk in the unity of the spirit with the Lord. Come on. So let's revisit something. I got, man, help me, Father, please, Jesus. Um, 
let's go back to something. Let's go back to St. John chapter 15 for a moment. Let's return there. We've been there. Let's go back there for a moment. All right. Then I want you to get Ephesians chapter 5. Okay, so you got two things. We're going to St. John chapter 15 right now, and then we're going to Ephesians chapter 5. All right, so look at this. Look at this now. St. John chapter 15, verse 1 says what? I am the true vine, and my father is the what? Husband. Okay, come on, wow. I'm the true vine, and I told you if, he, if he's identifying true, then there must be a false. Yes. Not just that I'm a vine, but I'm the true vine. Yes. Therefore, there's a false vine. Yes. So you can be connected to either one of the vines. Yes, sir. But this is the true, I'm the true vine. Okay? And there are many vines, by the way. Okay? <laughs> don't, don't, don't get it twisted. So he said, I'm the true vine. My father is the vine dresser or the husbandman. Every branch, now he's talking about us, right? Every branch where? In me. What does, that, doesn't, that doesn't do what? Doesn't bear fruit. That, come on, bear is not fruit. What does he do? Take us away. My Lord, and every branch that what? Bear is fruit, he does what? Purge it that it may bring forth more fruit. So, so let's get here first. <clears throat> Let's deal with this. Jesus, the Father first, the Father is more into this than even Christ, but because Christ is the producer of it through the vine coming to you, the sap that's coming to you, Christ is the vine that's giving you the sap to bring forth fruit. The Father wants fruit. Okay? And the Father is depending on the vine to produce the fruit. Yes. Did you hear me? Yes. The father is not depending on the branch mm -hmm. to produce the fruit. Yes. Okay, I'm telling you some stuff today. Y'all got to write this down. The father is not depending on the branch to bring the fruit. The father is depending on the vine to produce what is necessary so that the branch can hold the fruit. Yes, that's good. The fruit is seen on the branches, but produced by the vine. Yes. I'm sea lying you man I'm trying to let this sink in there you gotta get you gotta understand this entire thing is about verse 1 this entire thing is about verse 1 who who's in verse 1 who, who are the two people in verse 1? I can hear you. Jesus, Christ, and the Father. Is that right? This whole thing is about verse 1. You tracking? The entire thing is about verse 1. You got to know that this entire process is about verse 1. Everything about the church is about verse 1. It's a relationship now between the Father and the Son. Again, I, I'm not going over. You go over for me to Ephesians chapter 1. Come on. Keep your finger. I'm coming right back. Okay, last week I didn't, I didn't take you to Bethel U. I'm taking you to BU today. Okay? A little bit. Going in there. So Ephesians 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? This is verse 3. Where? In heavenly places. Where? In heavenly places in Christ. In Christ. Blessed be the, come on. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who? That's verse 1. Did you hear me? Yes. That's verse 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 1 of, the, of, of Saint, Saint John 15 and 1. Right? Yes. Who? Who's the who? Talk to me today. Who's the who? The Father. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us? Father has blessed us. Yes. 
with what? All spiritual, spiritual blessings. Is the Father doing this? And he did it in heavenly places, but he did it in Christ. He did it in the vine. He did it in the vine. So the, in, so the understanding is, if you're not in the vine, you don't get the blessings. Amen. Mm. All of the blessings are in him. We're going to go there. We, we're dissecting it. See, I went to St. John 15 the other week, and I knew I had to come back to it. I just made got in there so that you would be in line with me about body ministry, uh, Minister Polk. But now I need you to go in there. I need you to dissect it so that you can now live in this place and understand why I said don't do nothing without asking ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's good. Every place we failed in God is because we didn't ask ahead. Amen. Oh, Amen. Jesus. We can put it on circumstances, people, whatever. It isn't that. You were you were on top of that horse right there. Wow. Old folks told me a long time ago when I was coming up. Only thing God cannot do is fail. That's what they used to say. I heard him. He seemed like he failed a lot in this church. I'm not talking about Bethel. I'm talking about the, 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 the church, if you will. Fail all the time. Because they're not holding to the head. You see, I'm taking my time with you today. Yes. I ain't taking my time that much last week. It was anniversary Sunday. I just had to preach a little bit. <laughs> but I want you to understand something, guys. Get this. All of your blessings are found in the vine. <clears throat> you must, listen, you must fight to be connected to the vine and you must fight everything that tries to sever you amen. from the vine amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. your enemies your enemies are the things trying to sever you from the vine yes sir your enemies are not just resistant things. We care not about things as resisting us as long as I'm in. <laughs> the reason why Jesus cries out so seriously on the cross, my father, my father, why has thou forsaken me? Father removed his hand and left the place where he now had to deal with this on his own. Up to that point, all the beating, the, ab the abuse, the, the, the amazing beating, mm. he was able to handle because mm. the Father was with them in it. Mm. Who is he talking to in the garden? I'm y'all ain't gonna help me. I, I'm, I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna get a church that's gonna help me one day. <laughs> I said, who was he talking to in the garden? So let me ask you something. Did he ever reference the devil? No. Was the devil ever a problem in the garden? No. Who was doing this to him? Who led him into that into that garden? The Father. Who, who came and strengthened him so he could get through this? The angel sent from So when men failed him who couldn't stay awake God strengthened him and he gets up and now encouraged the men that failed him. Yes, Wow. We 
We probably got up and been mad at them rascals. <laughs> I done come to you twice. You still sleep. <laughs> We've been fussing at them and all of that. <laughs> you, look, I can't depend on you. In my greatest need, he encouraged them. Sleep on now. The time is at hand. Come on, come on. Come on. Am I talking to anybody in the house that getting this with me? Okay. So if that is the case, he gets up to strengthen them because God has strengthened him and God is with him. He knows God is with him. I can face anything. What I'm about to face is going to be brutal. As I told you, not 40 stripes save one. Not 40 stripes. This is brutal beating. This is, be, this is to the end of, almost to the end of your life. This is unrecognizable beating. And you still gonna have to take a cross. My God. You still gonna have to bear a cross. And God's still with me. And it's not until the time where you gotta take it all on now and die that the Father has to leave you. And at that point, you, you, you get it. You can't leave me. You can't leave me. That's what he's saying. You can't leave me. <laughs> you can't leave me. I can't bear this without you. Where are you? That's what he's saying. He said, we, we, make, it so, we make it so religious, don't we? <laughs> my father, my father. You know, well, I have the awful thing in me. <laughs> passion plays. Yeah. Which don't give you the real essence of the passion. And, the, and even, the, even the passion of the Christ didn't even touch it. That's right. Didn't even touch the level of this whooping, this beating, this brutal, this humiliation. Psalms 22, again, gives you a better sense of it. You don't even get a sense of it until you read all of this. In Isaiah, in Isaiah 52, you get a sense of this horrifying beating. This Via Della Rosa. And he says, listen, let me tell you something. I can't do this without you. So he knew at that point he had to die. Because until that point, he's on that cross, he ain't, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> he's not going anywhere. You can't kill a, a sinless person. There's no death in me. Amen. He submitted to death based on what the Father's word was. He sent me to die. Therefore, now it's time for the death. I'm trying. Oh, no. Glory to God. Man, I don't know if this is this too deep. He is showing you this is your life. So, in your greatest misery, your greatest problem, you're supposed to be totally going after the head. Yes. Yes. Amen. You can't go after nothing else. I won't. I'm trying to find peace. You can't find it without the head. That's right. That's right. You got to go after the one that can help you. Yes. There is no other one that can help you. Matter of fact, Isaiah 53 says, and he opened out his mouth. Come on, why? He was a lamb um, led us to the slaughter. Come on. And he opened not his mouth. Why he opened not his mouth? There was nobody to talk to. Who am I going to tell about what I'm going through? Who am I, I going to complain to? It's the Father that's doing it. The Father says that he might be satisfied. And again, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the headless horsemen know what I'm telling you, but don't adhere to what I'm telling you. The headless horsemen know everything I'm saying. Religiously. But they don't live it. Amen. 
This one. Great, sir. And when you get this, it's it's difficult. We're going let me say let me say this to you, to, to you right now. I, I have failed. I just showed you. I messed up twice. I have failed. I probably will fail again because it's a learning experience. Many of us will fail in our action, in our deeds, in our attitudes. We're gonna fail. Right now, you should be thanking God for grace. Yes. <laughs> yes <Lord>. <laughs> <laughs> it's about right now. It's about right there at that point, Jewel, that you need to be thanking God for some grace. Yes. Hallelujah. And enough time to repent. Right. That's yes. Hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Hmm. Come on, am I talking to the right people? Yeah. And so Paul is trying to get us to understand this in Ephesians 1. That all the blessings are in him. And go back to second, go back to um, um, John. Go back to John. John 15. So the first verse is about Jesus and the Father, right? That's all it's about. Because the whole thing is about them. The whole relationship now is about them. And now he's brought us into it in verse 2. The branches... Oh, so I don't forget. So I told you many times ago, and this one fits. This one works for me. Come, give me, give me a tight one in here to this plant here, Greta. All right. So what happened is the vine dresser, the vine dresser, the husbandman, is not only attending to the vine, but he's making sure that all of the leaves are clean. Did you hear what I just told you? And if any of the leaves are in the dirt, see, see, this is down here in the dirt. Can you, you can't see it? Slide over, um, y'all. Thank you. Let us get this shot. Live stream, we're trying to help you out. So if any of the leaves are down here in the dirt, he take it away. Read the verse now. Every branch of me that bears not fruit, stop. So he's not cutting it off. He takes away. He takes it out of the dirt. He washes it off. Because as long as the branch is in the dirt, it can't bear fruit. And the husband, the father, is all about the vine producing fruit through the branches. Yes. So if your life is in the dirt, ah, oh Lord. Uh, Lord. If your life is in the dirt and ain't producing the fruit, Father is coming. That's his. That's his mercy and his grace yes. to pull you out of that dirt. Yes. Start washing you off gently yes. to get you back in place and position you in such a way. That you're no longer touching the dirt. So that fruit can come. And he's not going to just do that. He's going to constantly come and inspect that branch that he rescued out of the dirt. Because he wants to make sure that it's now producing what he wanted for it. Are you with me? Are you understanding this? That's to take you away. That is not so. And then he says, "What if the tree is bearing?" He says, "He come. He starts snipping pieces. What? He's pruning. Yes. He's not killing it. He's pruning it. What does the pruning do? I can't hear you. What does the pruning do? A lot more fruit to come forth. By the way, my wife asked me, "Did you? Did I know this? I've been knowing this, and I, I, I think I talked about it before." But my wife said, "Do you know we got an apple tree out there in the front?" I said, "Absolutely, I know we got one out there. The problem is, it will not produce one apple. Know why? Had been purged. It's never been purged. That tree has never been purged since I've been here. It's never been cut back one time, Miss Virus." <laughs> 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 and t- <laughs> I ought to talk to my folk that know about cutting down trees and fixing stuff. 
Huh? No fertilizer. no fertilizer. Haven't been fertilized. Haven't been cut back. But if we fertilize it and cut it back, it'll be tr it'll be apples all out there. And rats too. Oh, and rats too. Oh, well, rats come eat for apples. Don't purge it, Miss Virus. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it unpurged. They get the one fall on the ground, doesn't it? Yeah, they look. They love eating that, eating that stuff. So I'm just telling you, that's why it doesn't grow. Because nobody's ever done anything. The husbandmen have never been there. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. So you got verse 2, right? Mm -hmm. We got verse 1, we got verse 2. Now read verse 3. Y'all got to hurry up because my time's going. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Now you're clean through the word. You're clean through the word. I have spoken unto you. I have spoken unto you. See, that's what he just told you. He said, I had to take you out of the dirt and I cleansed you with the word that I spoke unto you. Yes. So it's a word that's cleansing. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Come on, read. Abide in me. Abide where? In me. And where? I in you. Because what? As the branch cannot bear fruit of that, Stop, stop. There you go. That tells you. Um, Vonzea, you came and took my air from me, man. Somebody told you to do that, other than me. Did you hear from the Lord? <laughs> See, you just missed it. <laughs> Somebody told you do something, and you ain't asked Jesus. Grace. <laughs> you ain't got to make it at North Pole, but come on. Yeah, so what happened is, he just told you that the branch cannot bear fruit what? Of itself. Of itself. So that means it's not about the branches. If the branch isn't connected to the vine, you get nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, ladies and gentlemen, your entire walk is in that verse. Okay, okay. I can't, I can't make this any plainer than I'm trying to make. Your entire walk is in that verse. Your entire walk in this, in this Christ walk, in this kingdom ecclesia walk is in that verse. Everything is about that verse. I'm in you. You're in me. I'm going to talk to you based on being in you. Did you hear what I just said to you? So my prayer life is about being in the vine. Yeah, that's right. My prayer life is not about me being a Christian. Right. You hear that? My prayer life is not about that. Y'all got to hear me. My prayer life is about being in the vine. That's so good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Read the next verse. I am the vine. I am the vine. Make sure you know it. Don't get it wrong. You are the branches. You are the branches. He that abides in me. He that abides in me and I in him. The same bring forth what? By the way, so you can understand, this word fruit is G2590. Okay? Carpos. K A R P O S. Carpos. And it means work. Come on. It means to act. It means deeds. It means advantage. It means profit. It means praise. It means thanksgiving. Did you hear that? Yes. That's the fruit you're bringing forth. <laughs> Read. For without me, can somebody underline that in their Bibles or circle it or whatever? Without me, you can what? Oh man, is that is that is that that's not a riddle, is it? <laughs> There's some things you have to figure out in the Bible. This ain't one of them. Hello, without me, you can do nothing. When you think about when you think about how many things we try to do. Without him. Without him. We care not even about what he think about it. But we want him to bless everything we decide. Wow. But what he was not a part of it. And I'm telling you, God's only blessing what he gives Jesus. 
He's not blessing what you produce. <laughs> Could you read the next verse, please? If a man abides where? In me. If he not, if he don't abide in me, he's cast forth what? As a branch. Come on and talk to me. And it's with it. Gather him up and do what? So he says this. He says, okay, so this is the piece that you got to worry about. This ain't the taking away. Because we used to talk about the taking away like he would take the branch away and cutting it off and throwing you away. No, this is the part. He's telling you, if you don't abide in me, you are a branch outside of me and we're going to gather those and burn them. Paul told you the same thing, told the Corinthians the same thing. He says, why? Everything you have, this is what I need you to understand. Everything you have is either going to be wood, stubble, hay, or gold, silver, precious stone. He says it's going to be one, of, it's going to come in one or two categories. And if it's in wood, stubble, hay, it's going to burn up. Yes. If, it's in, if, it's, if it's in the other category, gold, silver, and precious stone, it's going to be refined. Yes. Did you hear that? He said, we're going to burn up everything that's not in me. Wood stubble, hay are stuff that was produced outside of Christ. Yes. Mm. It's good. Which means, as I told you, the scary thing is we can go in and out. Mm. And that's scary. Yeah. We can go in and out. We can be in him at a time and prospering and then decide on our own to walk out and do our own thing. And think we're still getting the same blessings we got while being in. Yes. And he told us, Paul told us, that I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man, the things that God has prepared for them who love him, not those outside of him. No, that's good. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5. I don't know. I'm believing God. I'm believing God today. I'm believing you are tracking with me, man. Because, man, I don't want, I want you to have it now. I, I, we got to have it now. We got to, come on, we got to get it now. Yes. What do we become a body of Christ again? A branch. What do we become a branch that's not moving outside of the things of God, but only moving with the things of God? Could you imagine how that would work? Do you understand that all the fruit that's on the branch, whatever fruit they're producing in your life, is going to, going to bless the entire branch? Yes. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. So if you're hearing from God and you get blessed, guess what I just got? Blessed. I just got blessed with you. That's why he tells you, he says, rejoice with them who do rejoice because if they got blessed, you just got blessed. He says also mourn with them who do mourn. Why? You got to bring them back in. Oh, Father, 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 Father. Yeah. Ephesians 5, verse 20. 1 and 22 and going on and it says <laughs> oh man I had so much for y'all today and I see I ain't gonna be able to get to it I'm telling you I need 35 hours I do I do I just see if anybody would stay with me that long verse 21 says submit yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord wives submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Could you please underline as unto the Lord? Yes. Please underline as unto the Lord. Really important. That's right. For the husband is head of the wife. Yes. Now we talk about headship. Mm -hmm. Y'all get this? Yes. Uh-huh. Even as Christ is I can hear you. Head of the church. You're not a part of a headless horseman. Even though he's head of the church. Come on. And is the what? Savior of the body. Now what you just heard was vine and branches. You might want to write beside that. That verse, vine and branches. That's what you just heard. Vine and branches. Head and body. Everybody with me? Y'all tracking? Yes. Okay, come on, keep on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Therefore, as the church, ecclesia, I'm sorry, 
is subject unto Christ. Oh God. Even so, let wives be to their what? In how many things? Everything. Now, it's going to get really interesting here. Thank you. This is going to get really interesting here. Watch. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church. Could you underline Christ loved the ecclesia and keep going and did what? Gave himself for it. Now, now. <laughs> okay, so, without, by the way, this message is not about husbands and wives, is it? <laughs> Neither is this passage. This passage is not about husband and wives either. Because I told you, I haven't found one wife that's subject to her husband and everything. Not found one. <laughs> if you are the one, please stand today. That we might acknowledge you and give homage unto you. And we will throw rose petals at your feet. And we will do all, yes, we will now put you on a pedestal. Glory to God. And... We will watch you as you walk in on air. <laughs> I don't have nobody standing live screen. But see this verse right here about these husbands. It says husbands love your wife even as Christ loved the church and did what? Okay. See this is how you got it. This is really how you have to say that. And, and was brutally beaten and humiliated for it. <laughs> I said, you got to say, not gave himself. That's too, that's too nice. That's too easy. That's too religious. No, you have to be brutally beaten, sped upon, humiliated for her. Really interesting to have Jesus up on that cross with those little lawn cloths on, ain't it? When he was buck naked. Humiliated. All things are naked and open with him with whom we have to do, who the eyes with whom we have to do. How naked are you as a husband before your wife? Mm. Not taking off your clothes. <clears throat> everybody in this earth got two people living in the earth, one that everybody know and the other one don't nobody know. That's right. Y'all yeah, ain't gonna help me. Somebody gonna help me eventually. Somebody on live, are they talking to me on live stream at all, Tanisha? Are they saying anything? They ain't just a little bit, a little smidgen. They ain't saying nothing to me either. I'm all by myself in this. I'm all by myself in this. This is sea law. You got two people living. Why? Because he was bruised. Amen. Bruising is the bleeding underneath of the skin that don't care nobody see the blood. You see the evidence of the blood, but can't nobody see the blood pouring. It's still blood, it's a bruise. It's still blood. That's the that's that's that hidden man. He even died for that rascal. The hidden the hidden man. The hidden man, the un, the, that crafty, un, unseen man. <laughs> the hidden sins. The sins that you're going to take to your grave with you. Yeah. Wow. Ain't nobody going to know about it until you, you get to heaven. Yeah. You're hoping it's going to be all right in that place because yeah. Jesus is there. Yeah. But it's going to still be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. Yes. I'm trying to get some help. I, look, I, look, I got enough junk in my, in, my, in my old man and everybody, man. Got an old man. Got a, Come on. We got stuff. Yes, sir. I got stuff. Come on. 
Lord, forgive me for it all. Let blood cover it all. Allow me to enter into the heavens with you. But God, I know I, come on, you got to give an account of it. It's dealing with your eternal reward. Oh, God. Husbands, do you love your wives like that? I haven't met one. One husband that stands up and say, I will be brutally beaten, shamed, like Jesus was shamed for my wife. I ain't found one that stood up yet. <laughs> they love their wife and all that, but they ain't standing up for that. They ain't taking that whooping. They ain't taking that beating. No, girlfriend on her own. No, we ain't taking that rascal. We ain't taking that rascal. No, I ain't taking that. Woo! Jesus, no, no. She can find her another husband. Oh, wow. wow. I got going about my business now, Lord Jesus. I got to take that. Come on, somebody. No, we ain't. No, no, no. no. Because he's not talking to you about husband and wives. Because ain't no man on the earth, no woman on the earth that can do what has just been laid out. So therefore, you are continually failing as a spouse if you're trying to adhere to Ephesians 5. All you can do is repent. That's it. Every day I'm repenting if I've got to try to do that. I repent because Georgia called me and she just got on my nerve by calling me again. You ain't hearing me. I am trying to work. Honey, what? And if I say it wrong, the tone is going to get me in trouble. <laughs> why you why you say it like that? Say it like what? <laughs> Why you guys sound like you were impatient? I wasn't impatient. You were impatient. No, I'm not. But I am now. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm in here trying to do something. You don't call me right in the middle of a J. I'm in there trying to write a book. I'm flowing. Honey. Baby, yeah, huh? Because I'm trying to remember. Say it right. Honey, come here. Okay, so there are more than enough times that she may need some assistance doing something because of her physical condition. So I'm getting up, I go in there, and she's standing at the sink. <laughs> You don't need no help. What do you want? Look at look right here. Look right here. Look right here. Look at what? Out the window. Look here. See, see that bush right there? No, you didn't. Oh no, you didn't. You did not. I promise you, I know you did not interrupt me to call me in here to look out the window to see a bush that ain't gonna move all day long. It's gonna be right there. If you can share it with me later. <laughs> Those men are not cutting down that bush when they cut the yard. Somebody, you need to tell them to cut that bush. Joe Andrew. <laughs> and then I'm in trouble. See, why, why you always got to take this attitude when I call you? I, I, I was I, I wasn't messing with you. I wasn't messing with you. I was in my office. I was by myself, minding my own business. I was typing. I was messing with you. <laughs> But somebody can call you, somebody can call you, and somebody can ask you a question without you taking this position with them. Come on, that's right. There you go. No, you can't call me, because I'm at work. <laughs> now, we back and forth. 
intense fellowship. We weren't having no intense fellowship because I was in my office minding my business. She was washing the dishes. There was no intense fellowship. Somewhere in the process, I started laughing. Because somewhere in the process, I realized this is crazy. And I just started laughing. I said, oh, this is stupid. I said, you, you, you know, this is you funny. You just funny. I don't see nothing funny. It's funny. I'm going back to my office. You keep washing the dishes. Because this is funny to me. <laughs> A bush. <laughs> you ain't never been there. No. You don't know nothing about what I'm talking about. <laughs> stay, stay, stay in my own house, right? <laughs> your house, man. Don't even mess with my house. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's true, though. It's just true. And so I just walked away from him. I said, you just spoiled. You just so spoiled. I ain't spoiled. Ain't nothing spoiled about me. I mean, you spoiled. All that because I didn't live that verse. It didn't have anything to do with her. It had to do with God showing me you can't live that verse. <laughs> you, you do not even have the ability to live that verse. Because at the slightest little interruption or irritation you have just failed. Repent. And that's how he deals with me a lot of times. He always, he always get me afterwards. <laughs> and show me how much you messed up. You just messed that up, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Holy Ghost said, all you had to do is go there and look at the bush, say okay, and turn around and walk back. <laughs> that's what he tells me. That's what he tells me. He said, all you had to do was go to the window, look at that, lock the window, and go, what, what is it? That bush? Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. This, they don't ever cut it down, honey. Okay. I'll tell them when they come back the next time. And turn around. Go back to my office. <laughs> we would have never had the intense fellowship. I would have enjoyed the verse. I wouldn't have got rebuked by the Holy Ghost. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it does seem easy when he shows you. It just ain't easy before he shows you. He just lets you put your foot in it. And so you try to learn from that from that that time for the next time. You follow what's happening? Yes. Okay. But you can't live this. This ain't for you. This is about Jesus and his church. This is what he's already done. He's telling you what he's already done. Ephesians 5 is telling you what he's already done. And that now you are his body. And he's going to take care of you. That's why you're going to be without spot or wrinkle in any such thing. He's not making you something that he has to wear. It is him that he has got as spotless. No wrinkles. No such thing. You're part of his body. He doesn't have a wrinkly body. Amen. Yes. Not a body full of spots. Or anything that's out of the way. It's a perfect body. He has brought you into himself so that you can bear fruit. Amen. Lord. Man, if we could get it. We could get it. So we learn all these things in the earth, um, especially stuff like we learn team. We try to learn team. And that's why men should get this better. We try to learn team and we've been on teams our whole life. And we're on team to try to be one. Yes. Yeah. The thing you try to do on a team is become one. And the team that can become closer to one has the best chance of winning. That's right. That's right. The co 
coach is there to do what? Bring the team to into oneness, which the fivefold is designed for, as I showed you last week, is to bring the team into oneness. The closer you get to being one, the greater you win. Yes. Yes. When there is anxiety and stuff going on on the team, yeah. you don't win. Right. When the come on, and they talk about the locker room. That's what they. That's what they. If you don't, if you don't know sports, they talk, the locker room is dis, disrupted. There are people in the locker room that ain't flowing with everybody in the locker room. Because what we don't realize a lot of time is that coaches are, don't hang out in the locker room. That's right. Coaches don't hang out in the locker room. There are people in the locker room designed to have the locker room. Am I right, Vonzel? Come on, you you were in the locker room, right? Come on, there are people. Come on, is, 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 am I right, woman of God? Come on. There are people in the locker room that says they are the veterans to try to make sure the locker room stay together. You follow what I'm saying? Coach don't have to do that. But what's being said from the veterans is the mindset of the coach. That's why the coach gets fired. You don't fire the team. <laughs> they fire the head. Which is why, why Hebrew chapter 4, man, my time is gone. I'm way past my time. And do you, do, you would not, I don't think you, you might. You would not believe that I was supposed to go to Genesis 13 and Genesis 15 and I'm going to Hebrews 4 right now. What does Hebrews 4 say, verse 1? Let us, therefore, Let us therefore do what? Fear. Fear. Wait a minute. Stop. Stop right there. That word means terror. Mm -hmm. It means to be in, be in terror. Let us therefore be in terror for what? Lest a promise be left up. Lest a promise being left of us of doing what? Entering into his rest. He says what? Any of you should come seen. So look at the word. It's seen in your Bible. Yes. Yes. Or a version of seeing. Seeing to do what? Come Comes short of it. He says this. If the head is not being represented in your life and it appears that he's not your head, you should be in fear. You should never let anybody think you're headless. There should be nobody that think you're headless. Everybody know you have somebody over you. He says, you don't have to worry about the devil dealing with you. He said, you're going to have to worry about me. Be in, be in fear. Be terrified of me. Paul says, we persuade men, pastor. He said, we persuade men because we know the terror of the Lord. Now, how many churches you going to hear about the terror of God? Of God? Ain't nobody telling you. They tell you how much God loves you, don't they? Yep. Come on, and He does love you, but they don't tell you about you misrepresenting His body. You should have known it for years, Vanessa. He says, "Take this communion." He says, "And do not take it if you are unworthy." Because you've done something against what? I can hear you. Against what? The body. Hmm. I'm yelling at you now, Anna. So I'm just trying to tell you guys, listen. <laughs> Woo! He's really serious about this headship thing. We haven't been. And again, the modeling of marriage, at best as we can, we can use the model that he uses in Ephesians 5 to try to identify to the world what it looks like. The best that we can. This is how it's supposed to look in Christ. And in many cases, we're not even showing that. So now the perversion of marriage is very easy because the church has never showed what it's supposed to look like from the beginning. Mm 
Mm-mm. Okay, I've got to close, man. I, I don't want to, but I've got to. Oh, man, I, I, Lord, help me. So, So the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. Without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. Verse 6 of St. Of, of, of John again. Verse 6 of St. John 15 is a picture of the headless horseman. I told you, so I showed my Thursday night class something, I showed my Thursday night class something, and I'll give you this as a way of as us maybe preparing ourselves for next week. But I showed them something on Thursday, and I sh went back to show them the chosen with Nicodemus on that top of that roof with Jesus. Um, in the in the in the chosen movies, and that whole encounter of Saint John chapter three, and how Nicodemus asked the the, the, the gentleman, the character playing Jesus, Nicodemus said to to Jesus, he said, "So is it is it time for the kingdom of God to come?" He said, basically before that he said I've been living my whole life waiting for this moment so is it time for the kingdom of God to come and when he says it all of a sudden in me again because I now realize what the Jewish community is looking for and how their Bible is arranged different than our Bible in their last book if 2nd Chronicles but our last book is Malachi. I realized when he asked that question, he's not asking the question that we would ask. He's not asking the question from a Malachi perspective. He's asking the question from a Chronicles, Second Chronicles 37 perspective. And I'm going, oh my goodness. And in, in the movie, it's really great because Jesus never, and he, he never even given him any account to it. He never deals with it. He doesn't deal with it. But when you realize that the disciples did the same thing after the resurrection. Yes. After the resurrection, you realize that they asked the same question. Will you now restore the kingdom of God? What were they asking? They were basically saying this. Are you now going to take over Rome? Are you now going to make Israel the greatest nation on the planet? Is it, is it time? It seemed to be. Why? You done got up. You were dead. You got up. We saw you die. You done got up. So when is a better time than now? Than taking over. Can't nobody kill you no more. Yes, Lord. You can walk in to Caesar and says, I'm taking over. And there's nothing he can do about it. <laughs> and Jesus said, it's not for you to know. What? The time or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. My Lord, my Lord. And then just leave on that sight. Just going bye, 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 bye. Leave them brothers standing like, whoa, not the time yet. Not the time yet. They asked the same question that Nicodemus asked. They asked it from the position of 2 Chronicles chapter 37. Okay, y'all got that? Now this is where I'm, so, so you'll be ready for next week. Listen to me close. Listen to me close. 
That's also the reason why they're still not looking for what you think they should be looking for. The reason why you're so baffled in your mind about Judaism is because they're not looking for what you think they should be looking for. You think they should be looking for a savior. They're looking for a conqueror. They're not looking for a savior. They're looking for a Messiah who conquers. And when you realize that, you now know why they can't accept Jesus. Because he was not the conqueror. They Are y'all hearing me, y'all? Are you getting this? But God told Abraham this. God told Abraham this. So your homework for this week is Genesis 13. Yeah, we might, might as well. I ain't going to skip. Genesis 13, 14, and 15. Okay? Genesis 13, 14, and 15. Read all three. What you will find is that when God gives Abraham these promises, God says to him, the dust of the ground. If you can, if you can measure the dust of the ground, you will now be able to measure your, inher- your, 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 your heirs. What do you think about that now? And then when he talks to him again, he says, if you can measure the stars of the, of the heavens, mm-hmm. but number them, mm-hmm. you, you can be able to, to number your descendants. One earth, one heaven. One example, earth. One example, heaven. One example, Jews. One example, you. You are the heavenly representation of guys. Y'all hear me? You're the heavenly. <laughs> Paul said, "How could that, that be? How could it not be that um, that that the heavens were first, or the or the spiritual were first? How be it that it was the natural first and then the spiritual? You are the spiritual beings that have now connected to Christ that functioning from its Paul says all are not Israel that are Israel. He says they are spiritual Israel. You are that. But the natural Israel has to come forth. Yeah. God's going to re- Abraham going to have both. Yeah, yeah. He got to have both. The body and the bride. Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Are y'all hearing me? That's what Ephesians 5 is talking about. And when you get this in your spirit and you understand this, you start approaching heaven from a whole nother place because all of your blessings manifest first where? You, you read it. Huh? Say it, sir. In heavenly places. You're not looking for your blessing first on the earth because you have connected to Christ in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. And because you've been looking for stuff on the earth, you've missed the heavens. And the heavens now will manifest itself on the earth. Are y'all hearing me? But the earth can't manifest itself into the heavens. So that's, that's your intro into next week. Father, we bless you and thank you for the word of God today. We pray in the name of the Lord that it has come through to our hearts and our minds that we understand it in a way that we have never understood it before. We bless you, sir. Hallelujah, that you're increasing us in every way. We give you praise, honor, and glory for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Live stream, we love you. Thank you so very much for being with us. Listen, make sure you give a, a seed offering. Give you, if you're part of Bethel, give your offering out there and all of that. If you're not a part of Bethel, we receive your seed. If you want to bless the house, we thank you so very much for it. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.